Hello, everybody, and welcome to Data Science Foundations. Um, this is going to be sort of like the last hyper practical or last big concept that we're going to be covering in detail. Um, and it's going to be bagging. Um, so even, even though this is a Foundations video, uh, I think it's pretty important that we explore bagging and boosting, at least talk about them just a little bit, because they fit very nicely into the paradigm that we have. Um, so bagging and boosting are the powerhouse models in machine learning, aside from neural networks. Um, if you're going to be approaching a machine learning problem, these are probably the techniques that you will use if you are not using a neural network. They fit very nicely into the bias variance ideas that we've developed previously in the class. Um, bagging is a technique that takes high uh, variance models and low bias models, so they've got high variance and low bias, and reduces their variance without decreasing their bias. Um, <clears throat> boosting is a technique that takes high bias and low variance models, uh, and it reduces their bias without hurting their variance. It's very cool. Uh, both, both of these are very, very cool techniques, um, and they sort of both fit in, in, into the latter half of the course's frameworks. The, the really nice thing about bagging, though, is it also fits into the earlier part of the course's framework. Uh, well, so bagging is called uh, bagging because it's a sort of a concatenation of two names, an abbreviation of bootstrap aggregation. So what you're doing, technically speaking, is you are taking a uh, your data set, you're taking bootstrap samples of it, like K, so five maybe, bootstrap samples. Um, you're then training a model on each of these bootstrap samples and you're averaging their uh, predictions to go ahead and come up with your own prediction. Um, so it's kind of using the bootstrap stuff in the past. And you can kind of imagine this in, in sort of the plug-in principle way. Um, so let's say we're trying to predict, you know, for one thing, the first example in the test set. Um, so what? So if you wanted to get an estimator for how your model so 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 here let, let me let me let me sort of make this very plain so remember we're what we're doing is we're not changing the bias of the model and we're decreasing the variance that's what that's what bagging does so how do you not change the bias of the model well so bagging just takes the exact same model and trains it multiple times and then averages the results so it's just as expressive as it was in the past so the bias does not change the best model will still just be that best model and the variance does change um, and the way I like to see this is, let's say you were trying to estimate uh, the bias of a particular model. And one way you could do this is you could estimate how that model would predict uh, on the first element of the training set, and then on the second, and then on the third. Um, and then if you knew how it would predict on all of those in, the, in, its, in its best form, right, when it had all of the data, um, then in this case, uh, you, could, you could go ahead and you could calculate the bias yourself. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, so imagine you're a person and uh, you're trying to estimate this. You might want to use the plug-in principle. And one thing you might want to do is you might want to, you know, get the population. So again, when we're thinking about the plug-in principle, first you want to think about it from the population view. So you want to take the population. You want to sample from the population. You want to train your model, and then you want to go ahead and uh, get a prediction on this on this point. But that's just one. That's just one sample, right? You want to do this lots and lots of times. And so if you do this lots and lots and lots of times, so you, you, tr you take a sample, you train your model, you get another prediction. You take a sample, you train your model, you get another prediction. If you do this lots and lots and lots and lots of times, you sort of get a um, kind of, uh, you, you, you kind of get the sampling distribution of uh, predictions uh, that your model would make. And that as, as, as the size of that sample gets goes to infinity, that itself sort of becomes, uh, well, you know, based on the plug-in principle, that becomes a very good estimate as to um, how your bias model, sort of the, the, the best model that you could actually make, would do on this particular data set um, or on this one point, and then you just have to sort of average them down. Um, so that's, that's kind of cool. But then, but then let's say you, you want it to... Right, and then let's say so. So that's that's sort of how you would estimate it, uh, but sort of what this does is it basically just sort of averages all of those estimators, right? And it assumes that the average of those guys would be a pretty good estimate for what the bias prediction would be, um, and it turns out that's that's pretty good. That's that's exactly what you would want to do if you actually, um, I mean, if you actually could do this, right? But unfortunately, you don't have the population, 
So what do you do if you don't have the population? Instead, you sample from the sample. So you sample from the sample, you, you get multiple samples, you train multiple models, and you predict on each point, and then you average their predictions. And voila, you get a very good estimate as to what the, the perfect model would be. They would give you that biased error, right? So what the perfect model would be um, uh, for this particular answer, right? And so in that case, if, if you've got a really good estimate for what the perfect model would be, right, you're very close to the bias, this means you have very low variance because how do we define variance? Variance is the difference on average of the model that you train on just some random you know, sample that you get um, and the bias. And if you already have a really good estimator of the bias, uh, sort of based on this sort of plug-in principle explanation, then you know, voila, you, know, you probably have very low variance. Um, so, so feel free to, if, if that one didn't make a lot of sense to you, feel free to comment it on, uh, on it below and I'd feel free to answer any questions. But I just, I just love how bagging kind of, it kind of relates to both of the previous parts of our class, really quite nicely. Uh, you know, it, it obviously relates to the, um, the bias variance trade-off. But then if you sort of view it through the lens of the plug-in principle in the first place, you can actually see how you'd, how you'd come up with bagging. Um, so anyways, so that's, that's enough theoretical stuff. Let's go ahead and do some empirical results. Um, we've, got, we've got our classic data, a sine wave. Um, the x data is negative 1 to 1. The y data is negative 1 to 1. Um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and let's, let's train a bagged model. So we're going to be using the exact same model that we normally train. So we're going to be, I believe we're having a model complexity. We're going to be changing the model complexity. OK, so our model complexity is going to be 2. Um, so we're always going to be training a second order polynomial. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to fit this, this sine wave. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's basically what we're going to be trying to do. Um, so let's, let's see what happens. So this is the bias. So I've gone ahead and I've changed the model complexity for our bias. So in this case, uh, what I've done is in this first one, I go ahead, and I believe, yes. So, so you'll notice for this first one, what I've done is I've, I've looked at, hey, let's ensemble, let's bag one model, let's bag 10 models, and let's bag 100 models, and let's check out the bias of these three models. So as it, as it turns out, and sorry, I, I didn't add the actual sort of subscripts here, so it was a little bit confusing when I looked at it again. Um, so when we look at one model, we get, we get a pretty low bias. We look at sort of 10 models averaged together, we get a, a higher bias, and we look at you know, 100 models averaged together and we get a higher bias. You're like, Nate, will the bias change? Well, look at the scale here. The scale is tiny and the confidence intervals between these model biases are huge. It, you know, there's actually no change in model bias. So what we've done is we've kept the bias the exact same. You know, we're able to increase the number of bootstrap aggregations, the number of times we sample from that bootstrap, um, the number of times we bootstrap sample and average the models together and we keep the bias. So the bias does not change you know, as, as we talked about before. So empirically, what, what does this change the variance? And I can go ahead and show you right here. And this is just magical. So notice the variance, at least for our first model, is incredibly big. Uh, so 2.25, really, really big. Now, you know, I don't think I'm using a really large training size. So example, I'm using a very small training size in order to exacerbate this, so five data points. Um, but the variance is huge. And as soon as we go ahead and we average 10 models together, the variance becomes significantly lower. Uh, so in this case, the variance drops to 1.25. So I guess a drop in one of the variance. And, and note, again, variance plus bias equals the test error. So, so again, we, we get a drop in one in the test error on average. Um, so the test error would be 1.25 plus whatever the bias is here, 0.19, so 0.2. So 1.4. Um, so, I mean, empirically it works. Um, it might seem a little bit magical to you, but once you think about it in terms of the plug-in principle, it's actually kind of cool. Uh, we basically try to estimate what, what our best hypothesis would be. And if we estimate what the answers our best hypothesis would give would be, uh, then we're able to keep the bias, right? The bias doesn't change at all. Um, but we're able to dramatically reduce the variance because we're trying to predict what our best hypothesis would say and therefore our difference between our predictions and our best hypothesis decrease. So anyways, so hopefully this gives you just a little bit of intuition onto how bagging works. I went ahead and I used bagging um, in this case for uh, linear regressions. So little bagging, bagging basically little linear regressions. Uh, though generally speaking, 
um, people will bag uh, trees. And this would be random forest, which, which you'll hear about later on in the practical machine learning course. Okay, so that's, that's basically it. As always, I included some comprehension questions here. Um, if you've not heard this before, uh, you know, generally what I like to do is go ahead, read the comprehension questions, write out your answer to the comprehension questions, and then comment below um, the answers to the comprehension questions. If someone has already left an answer similar to yours, just go ahead and give them a thumbs up, and I'll respond to everyone that sort of submits a new answer. Um, so this is going to be the last sort of hyper-technical one. Next time we're going to be talking about inductive bias, which is kind of like, why are we doing machine learning research anymore? And then finally, we'll present the conclusion of the class. Okay, uh, till next time. Thanks.